Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from the Perception Action Podcast in ASU, back with another article review. In this one, I want to look at an issue I first discussed back in episode 321. That is the apparent inconsistency between the findings from the body of research looking at differential learning and the body of research looking at the focus of attention effects. So what do I mean here? So there's a long history of research by Gabby Wolf and colleagues and a lot of other people, including myself, which is which has compared and contrasted internal versus external focus of attention instructions. And the dominant finding, although there's some differences in qualifications um, through that literature, which is summarized really nicely in this systematic review they just published last year, is that an external focus of attention is better for learning than an internal one, right? So to, to remind you, an external focus of attention is referring to the outcome of your movement, the, the effect your movement has on the environment, pushing off from the ground, hitting the ball, moving a club, right? Whereas an internal focus of attention focuses on the actual movement itself, flexing your knee, bending your arm, pushing off from your foot, right? So it's referencing your body. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of research showing a clear advantage for external focus of attention. Yet, if you look at the differential learning research, which I summarize, summarized in previous episodes, you know, which has shown to be beneficial, right? There are clear, clearly many of the instructions used in the differential learning method are involved internal focus, right? Keep, keep your two hands, right? Your right hands, your arm, your you're talking about your hind leg, your hips, right? So remember, in a differential learning, what we're doing is giving an athlete an instruction that gets them to move or posture themselves in a different way with every execution, right? So they're exploring this movement space. Typically, at least the way it's reflected in the paper and the way that I've done it in, in the study I used it, you do this by giving explicit, you know, internal cues. Move your feet, move your stance wider on your feet. Move your feet wider when you hit the ball next time hold your hands higher, right? So these two bodies of literature seem to disagree with each other, right? So what's going on here? And this was a question that was addressed in this recent study uh, by Wolfgang Schulhorn and colleagues, um, who's obviously the, the inventor of differential learning, trying to ad address this looking at uh, soccer, specifically futsal kicking. So what they, you know, obviously, um, they set the stage by looking at, you know, what the role of differential learning is and how, how it's used, right? So, you know, the idea, of course, is with um, differential learning, the idea is that in actual competition, you're never going to repeat the same movement, right? So it's better to just explore in practice, right? To learn about the possible solution space so you can find the solution you actually need in, um, the, in, in the actual game, right? Um, it applies to, um, you know, it's not, um, it, you know, it doesn't really talk much about these issues of focus of attention, uh, things, um, you know, and they recognize here, as I mentioned, differential learning <coughs> is occasionally associated with an internal focus. I might make that a bit stronger. From what I've seen, it's often associated with an internal focus, right? So that's the background. So they recognize, you know, if you take the uh, Gabby's Wolf works, Wolf's work and broaden it into optimal theory, right? One of the aspects of, of optimal theory is that an external focus of attention is better. External focus is more beneficial for motor learning than an internal one, right? So they're acknowledging this conflict that I just described. So the aim of the present study was to separate these two things apart, right? So they compared and contrasted differential learning versus focus of attention using different combinations, okay? Um, so what they were predicting was, so what they essentially had was differential learning conditions with both internal and external instructions, and then just uh, traditional repetitive practice with both internal and external instructions. And what they were predicting was kind of two things. <clears throat> The, um, they predicted that the main effect is the differential learning effect. Diff basically, they're predicting differential learning outweighs focus of attention, right? So all differential learning will be better than any other type of training, even if it has internal focus of attention. That's kind of what they were, they were arguing in this paper. So what did they do? They took uh, 40 uh, girls um, age 16 to 18 in Iran. They were split into five equal groups, okay? Um, DL with an external focus, DL with an internal focus, 
um, DL without a specific focus, and traditional training with traditional feigning with an external focus, traditional training without a specific focus. So, you know, for me, I don't know why they didn't include traditional training with an internal focus, just to be complete. Also, I'm always, I'm never a big fan of without a specific focus in these studies um, because you don't know what the athlete's doing. But anyway, um, they do, it is, it, numbers are a little small, bands eight per condition, but it, it is a nice overall, pretty good design comparing, at least, you know, they're, te again, teasing these things apart, I think is a great idea, okay? They use a pre-test, post-test design. So they looked at shooting skill. They got you to shoot from different angles and different positions, uh, gave you an accuracy score in terms of shooting, okay? Um, then uh, there's a, a retention test after training, and they also do the transfer test was basically under competition, under pressure, okay? So here's an example. Here's our five conditions, uh, the three differential learning, uh, the two uh, traditional, uh, you, you see they train for 12 weeks. So that's a really impressive part of the study. You know, usually training studies are six weeks. So this is really nice. They had 10, you know, 12 weeks. Um, they had a post-test right away. One week later, they had a retention test. Then one week later, uh, later they, as I said, they transfer condition was under pressure, right? So they brought in spectators and, and did some other things. Okay. So that was the basic design. Um, the differential learning conditions, the things that were varied, right? And it, they use the traditional, you know, we're practicing doing shooting here, the standing position, um, you know, how your your hand position, you, how you move, um, your, your plant foot, your shoot direction, velocity, what your eyes are doing, both eyes closed, open, foot position, and so on. Um, so they have very, very uh, typical differential learning. Again, remember what we're gonna do is pick from these randomly to try to get you to move a different way on every single execution. That's the whole idea of differential learning, right? Random fluctuations in movement, right? Not pushing you to any particular correct movement, getting you to explore and try a whole bunch of different things, okay? And you can see muscle tensed, relaxed, so lots of different conditions. Okay, let's get into the specifics of the five groups, right? And this is where I have a little bit of an issue with this paper and it makes it unclear, okay? so. The di differential learning external focus group. First, they received verbal instructions for the movement to be executed according to the combinations from the table. And then they received an instruction for an external focus, okay? Um, where they had to focus on the target. So, right, so what they were told, for example, is shoot the ball with the middle of your foot while focusing on the upper left corner of the goal, okay? To me, that is questionable whether that's truly an external focus of the attention instruction. It's a long instruction where the first half is an internal focus, right? The second half is external, right? So when you tell people to shoot the ball with the middle of their foot, that's an internal focus of attention instruction, instruction that's gonna get them to, to focus on the middle of their foot. While focusing on the upper left corner of the goal, I guess, you know, it's hard to predict what would happen. I'm guessing they're going to focus on the inner portion of their foot and then focus on the goal, right? So it's a little bit, for me, a messy intervention, right? It's mixing both the internal instruction, reference to your body, with an immediate external. I don't know if that's a truly external focus of attention instruction for me. Um, you know, in a traditional focus of attention study, all you would say was, I want you to kick the ball while focusing on the upper left corner of the goal right? You know, one way you could think of it, you know, one of the proposed advantages why external is better, focus of it, is it allows for self-organization. It allows you to do what you want, right? If I'm telling you you have to kick the middle ball in the middle of your foot, I'm not really allowing for self-organization now, am I? So um, to me, that's kind of messy, but you know, that's what they did. The internal focus of attention group, you know, the same here, a basic thing, shoot the ball with your middle of your foot. So the same first half of the second, and then focusing on the moment the foot hits the ball, right? So in some ways they're telling you what to do and then what to do during. But again, I, I think it's not a very clean distinction for me, right? Um, the control group, the only instructions they were given was shoot the ball with the middle of the foot. Um, that, the authors are calling that without a specific focus. That's a clearly an internal focus of intention instruction, right? Shoot the ball with your middle of your foot is an internal focus of attention instruction that would be used. So this is an this is another internal condition, 
a bit more clean one than that one. But for me, it's another internal. Um, the other two one, um, they received demonstration, okay? And they were asked to follow, given very specific instructions about how to shoot. Ex external, um, again, um, the external focus attention instructions were shoot the ball with the toes and focusing on the left corner of the goal. Again, it has reference to the body, an internal focus in the instruction, right? It may, it, admittedly, it's the first part, but to me, it's still kind of questionable. Uh, shoot at the goal with your toes. Um, this, again, is not a specific, un, unspecified focus. It's an internal focus, right? So, so it's hard to exactly interpret the results of these studies because I don't think the focus of attention manipulations are very clean, right? But the important point is the, the two, these were given very specific instructions about planting your foot, shooting, you know, so traditional prescriptive instruction. Okay, that's my, all the caveats have gone out. Well, what did they actually find? So these are the scores for um, the different conditions. Pre-test, everyone's the same. Good. That's what you want. Post-test, right? The highest acquisition rates, okay, were achieved in the differential learning groups, okay? So differential learning group was always better than the traditional training, no matter what the instruction, right? You can also see, right, so the differential learning internal focus is better than traditional external focus, right? So it seems to support their hypothesis that differential using differential learning is a more powerful manipulation than manipulating the focus of attention instructions, right? Because it's overriding this classic effect that internal focus is bad for learning, not when you use it in a manner that's with differential learning. So that's kind of this. You can see here, um, there is some suggestion that differential learning with an external focus is better um, then with an external, then with a external focus is better than with an internal focus. The scores are all higher. You can see the pattern is pretty similar for retention and transfer and post test is pretty similar. Um, they, so there is, looks like that focus of attention instructions do modulate the effect of differential learning. As I said, I think I would, if it was a cleaner manipulation, maybe we could see this a little bit better. So I think in terms of practicality of taking a message from this, you know, again, the, it seems there's lots of benefits for differential learning. That's There's lots of research showing that. Now, if you go to my uh, perceptionaction.com resources page, I have all the studies listed there. There's a lot of evidence that it works. I think the practical message would be here is that any of your instructions that you're using in your differential learning conditions, if you can somehow change the wording to make them external, right, um, you know, keep your, uh, move your feet uh, to these, these points on, of tape on the ground, right? Instead of, so widen, to feet, widen towards the tape on the ground rather than moving your feet in a certain way. Any way that you could make it more external, this kind of suggests there's going to be a little bit of a bump up in how well differential learning works, okay? Um, so it suggests, uh, but what they conclude is there's consistent advantages with deferential learning, right, um, compared to reputation-based training, okay? Um, they encourage uh, movement errors, right? Um, we're getting you to um, natural fluctuations, right, trying to get you to move in different ways, right? So it's basically explaining the logic of differential learning, okay? So I think this study kind of gets a little bit at so based on the results, the focus of it combined with DL as it results in a higher improvement than that, okay? Provide an indication of stronger influence, um, you know, of this, okay? Um, since all the DL interventions, whether internal or external, showed better performance, um, the results test more benefit influence of DL training method compared to traditional training methods, even with the focus instructions, right? So, um, they're saying none, um, DL, it would be great of interest to know, have additional influences, you know, as, you know so uh, with the other things involved in um, um, optimal theory, like expectation, and choice, do they affect differential learning as well? So I think this is a really interesting study getting along the right lines. I think we need to do it a little bit cleaner if we really wanted to tease these apart clearly. But I think, you know, this is kind of, mirrors what I found in, in this study I did before. So this was a study where I compared the constraints-led approach with uh, traditional prescriptive instruction. In my traditional prescriptive instruction, I had both internal and external uh, cues. 
And what I found was that the constraints that approach worked the best. And one of the things I acknowledged in this is constraints that approach, you get kind of an external focus for free most times, right? In constraints that approach, you're typically referencing some external thing, hit the ball over that barrier that was in the study, hold, make the ball under your arm, make the ball go forward, the connection ball go forward. That's external focus. So I, I suggested maybe there's an additive effect right here of using a constraint. And for free, you get this external focus of attention. And so I, I think that's the bottom line for from this paper. The differential learning, you know, it's a, you know, as a powerful method, I think if we can be careful about how we choose our wording when getting people to move in different ways, the then um, the we can get this kind of additive effect, or, you know, this bonus effect of using external focus. Okay, that's it for this article review. Thank you. Uh, cheers for now and keep them coupled.